trying to what why pronate the foot in order to re access supination is that we have to teach people whether they are pronated or not to be able to pronate the foot better and within the confines of, of what i'm defining as, as a pronation so when i ask people in class what they think a pronation is they'll they'll do this with their hand and tip it yeah. up and down and that that's not actually what a pronation is that well that would be a frontal plane movement into eversion inversion of the whole foot where you can't keep the big toe on the ground or the little toe on the ground. So you, you, you're you on what I call an ice skate. You're not in, on a, you're not using the foot to its full potential already, just with the concept of what you're looking for in your head. So right. if we think this is a pronation and you look at a foot and it's doing that, you go, it's fine, but it isn't. It's not doing that at all. The movement we want to begin to do with our hands is more like a jellyfish where it lengthens and spreads and lowers and all three arches are rising and falling together. And if you can get that, um, if you can get that um, idea in your head and you begin to look for that in the foot, then you begin to really express the foots. Yeah. So the tibial internal rotation is is going to happen with the foot pronation. Uh, yeah, the foot pronation. Um, and then what I always say is then you jump the tibia. So you go from straight from foot to femur. If the foot's pronating, your femur has to internally rotate. And the thing about the femur is it can rotate more than the tibia and so we have this conversation around the knee about external rotation versus internal rotation um but if you jump from the foot to the hip you you can marry together femur internal rotation with foot pronation and femur external rotation with foot so no, um the, there's an idea in biomechanics that when you uh, flex your hip the pelvis must posterior tilt right and that's because it's based on the idea of lying on a couch so right. if i'm laying on a uh, we say couch you say table laying on a table massage table or a plinth and you you lift your knee up to 90 degrees pelvis posterior tilts and hopefully your lumbars flex into the bed right that then becomes this hard and fast rule but what you'll see in the gait cycle, and that's why I bring it up, is that there are moments in the gait cycle where as the as the hip is flexing, the pelvis is posterior tilting. But there are other moments in the gait cycle where the hip is flexing and the pelvis is anterior tilting. Now, if you live by the rule that a hip flexion creates a posterior tilt, that's all you ever do. Mm -hmm. But if you recognize that actually when the hip flexes, we want it to posterior tilt here and anterior tilt here, I need to be good at both. That means I need to be good at posterior tilting and anterior tilting, which is great for your psoas and your glutes and your abs and your low back muscles and your hamstrings. Um, and I also need to be able to do the same, get the hip extension with a posterior tilt and an anterior tilt.